Uh, hello everybody, Ian Raps here, welcome back to the Platinum Edition map. A lot of people asked to uh, request this map not too long ago, so I'm back on the server once again today. Uh, admittedly, it was because I hadn't updated my mods, uh, or what actually happened was, I updated the server's mods, but not my mods. Uh, so I just wasn't able to get on the server for a while there, so... That's what caused the problem, initially at least. So, alright. I guess I don't have that hooked up that way, so... Anyways, like I said, so we are back in the server for the time being here. Uh, I'm joined by Spud and Liz, although I think they're both AFK right now. And they don't know I'm recording yet, so... Let's give them a quick heads up. Just so they know. There we go. At least they'll see it then, so... Alright. Yeah, but this map's progressing quite a lot, actually. As you can see, we have Field 29, which is the one we're working on right now. Which is one of the larger fields on uh, the Platinum Edition map. Looks like we encountered a little bit of lag there. Well, that's not too bad, though. Not too bad. Went to the Montreal car show this weekend, which was fantastic as always. One of my favorite car shows. I've been to the Montreal one, I've been to the Ottawa, Ottawa one, I've also been to the um, uh, Toronto one. Those are the big ones that I've been to. And they're all pretty good. But I think my my favorite's still the Montreal one because of the way it's set up. And I'm back. welcome back, Spud. This morning. Not too bad. I'm recording, by the way, already. <laughs> I just realized the time. I had to do some online banking this morning, so I was just like, oh, let's get that done first. It's kind of important. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought I forgot my, uh, I messed up the password or something like that, so I end up calling into the banking, and they're just like, no, no, you just need to do this and this up. I'm like, oh, right, okay, never mind. Crisis averted. <laughs> but it's all good. How's your week going so far? Uh, not too bad. A little cool this morning, but, uh, but it has been great. Yeah, did you get all that freezing rain down there? Uh, no, we just got rain. Uh, okay, I know further south than you, uh... I know they got quite a bit of freezing rain down there, and Kingston Way got lots as well. Yeah, my buddies up in Lindsay, they got some glare ice from the sleigh coming in, so they got to go by his house. Yeah, this morning it looks a little... Yeah, yeah, yesterday morning, it was like, on the, on the side roads it was kind of rough, and then main roads are fine. Hi, Ian! Here it is. How are you? I'm well yourself. Oh yes, I'm fine. Have you noticed all the changes? Not all of them, but some of them. And how do you like them? Uh, I'm, I'm cool with anything. I'm not very particular. Are you recording? Yes, I am. FYI. No worries. All right, let's go ahead and make this turn here. It's funny with my steering wheel. Uh, if I don't go in and set the uh, my global settings back up to what it was originally, uh, the steering wheel ends up being super super stiff. Which isn't it's just strange because I'm not used to it. I usually like to leave the steering well, wheel. I might as well go and empty this trailer because I don't think I'm going to fit in another harvester load. Okay. Because usually it's like really loose, in, like it's really loose to turn. Like the uh, resistance springs, the springs that re like resist when you make the turns aren't uh, are fairly like your cup of tea, bud? fairly loose in this case. Whereas right now they're like right. super difficult to turn. Hot and black. Yes. Hot and black. black. No, they call it clear tea. I just call it black. I don't Any know. Sugar? So you have it natural. It's the only way to drink tea or coffee. Black and no sugar. No sugar, no milk, because then you impede the flavors in either. Ah, that's yeah, I've tried. I've tried drinking tea and coffee without any sugar and no milk, and it tastes too bitter. 
It's gonna need to find the right tea and coffee then, I guess. Well, I've I've um, Spuds actually twisted my arm into buying Earl Grey tea. Uh, yeah, it's a good tea. I mean, if Captain Picard can drink it every single episode, why can't you, right? If who can drink it every single episode? Yeah, Captain Picard. Jean-Luc Picard of the Starship Enterprise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> does he drink Earl Grey? Yes. I like this too. Or you can go Captain Catherine Janeway and drink black coffee. She beat the Borg with it, apparently. <laughs> I don't know how much Star Trek you watch, Liz. That might have been over your head there a little bit. Actually, I've watched just a bit, I've watched every single episode. Oh, okay, okay. You're on the same page then. And I have all of the main um, movies on DVD with um, Captain Kirk. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, but the only ones I don't have uh, the, is the um, the Captain Picard series and the Star Trek Voyager. So like Generations. Yeah, I don't have I, I don't have the Generations, and I don't First Contact, have... Nemesis. Oh, Nemesis and that, and First Contact I've got. Oh, okay, okay. It's just you mean the series itself, not necessarily the movies. Yeah, the TV series. Oh, I gotcha. I watched them all on Netflix. I went through the original series with Captain Kirk, which are actually pretty good. Like, once you get past the whole graphic side of things, like it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> That's all the original ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The storylines are interesting, okay. and like the character development between the, the characters in the show is pretty good, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you were saying a while back there, Spud. The yeah, I've got... So. Yeah, I've got the, um... I've got some of them. I think I've got one series on Blu-ray. All right, so we're finishing up this field. Looks like almost today. I went too far. Got these giant harvesters here. We got two spuds working the other harvester. It looks like so. Well, I sort of like drove past the field. <laughs> <laughs> drove past the field. Just by using GPS. I am, but I can turn the dinner on. All right, let's see if we can. Link up with Spud's course here. Oh, I was using GPS. Alright. Actually, it's interesting. My uh, One of my bosses at work actually bought a combine recently. He bought a 9560. Well, uh, he hasn't purchased it 100% yet, but he has uh, made, uh, I don't know, he's committed to it, let's say. So, that's kind of funny, because though. All the talk at work yesterday was all about the combine and what's wrong with it, what needs to be done with it, and whether it's you know right, whether it can be run basically right away or not. Um, that was the big thing. Ian, did um, Spud tell you about the about the fiasco we had on you the other day? On me? Did Spud tell you about the fiasco we had on here the other day? No. Okay. Maybe you better not know about it then. <laughs> that incident with the uh, big bud and the sea hawk. Did you manage to flip it or something? No, uh, I hired a worker on 29 to do some seating, and he, even though I had to headland in, he jumped it, went across three, three most of four, a couple strips across seven. Oh really? Oh, that's <laughs> that's pretty impressive, actually. 
I'm surprised he was able to go that far. But I guess even with the headland too, that's pretty surprising actually. Usually with the headland they're a bit more, oh we don't need to go that crazy, but you know, that's that's intense. Too funny. I don't know. Whenever you hire a worker, you never know what's going to happen. Sometimes it'll be perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah, we had a great time cleaning it up, didn't we, Spud? It was okay, actually. Just plant everything in canola after that, basically. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I've had my fair share of crazy times with hired workers, that's for sure. And, and of course, course play as well. It always decides to do crazy things. Oh. When I suppose realizes I'm right here. He will in a second. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm like, he'll figure it out. Ian, what speed are you going at? Yeah, because that's what I was going at. And it seemed to be going too slow. Alright. Let's go ahead and pick up Spud's course there. I'm just going to sit here and watch you guys sort it out. <laughs> Do you have anything in your harvester, Ian? No. Okay, so you're empty. Well, 94 liters is practically empty. Still showing 0% yep. there, so... Yep, we're definitely gonna finish this field. I don't think there's anything else on this field, so it's not so bad. Oh, I just got nudged there. Who's nudging me? Oh, it must be... Liz there. You'd be surprised how difficult what she's trying, she trying to do right now. If you have a, if you have a high ping, uh, that is one of the harder things to do uh, because you're trying to like trying to do that and you're just like trying to stay in the straight line at the same time and then while you're you know track on there on your screens kind of jumping around oh it's rough sometimes very very rough all right let's go ahead and finish this up looks like we only have the one pass left so it's not so bad there so which is good very very good does, but when you when you see this field again, you're not going to do, you're not going to go diagonally, are you? Yes, I will. It's still probably the most efficient way to seed the field. Just make sure I got a couple of good headlines in. Yep, yeah, that should do it. Oh, I was just thinking we don't want the same problem that we had last time. Yeah, that's why you're saying do a couple of feet headlands this time, because you said you only did one last time, Mace Squad. Yep. The sea park was pretty wide, but just do the angle we finished up at most. Went rogue. And then when um, Spud was to like log off, he asked me to um, collect the sea hawk from field 29, which I went to do, but I didn't find it on field 29. I found it at the bottom of the river. Oh, jeez. And I had to reset it back to the shop, so when Spud logged on, um, the next time he logged on, he found it at the shop. And I came on and I said, uh, Spud, I hope you found the seed hawk at the shop because that's where I had to reset it to. Yeah. Are you guys excited about the new Ropa DLC? Yeah, I like it's cheap. Yeah, it's only like about eight dollars US. That's yeah, pretty cheap. It's going to give you a few of the uh, rope harvesters for sugar beets. I don't know if it's going to be for sugar beets and potatoes, but I'm assuming it's just sugar beets. Yeah, it's for the one uh, uh, mid sized potato harvester pull behind. So use that on the small map. 
And it comes with some it comes with some good cedars too. Oh, does it? I didn't even notice that. Yeah, and there's a machine that comes with it that apparently washes the sugar beets. Oh. That's interesting. Well, from what Farmer Beavis was saying um, one time was that you, I think it was Farmer Beavis, um, you dump the sugar beets on the ground beside the field and you pick up the sugar beets with this um, sugar beet washer and it loads it into a an, like an overloader type of thing hmm. and um, and then you can um, overload it into trailers and um, take it to the take it to either to sell it or to put it in your silos I don't know hmm that's kind of curious actually so you would think that they would be worth more because they're clean. They probably wouldn't last as long, though. In real life, I mean. Yeah, so my my in-laws don't wash the potatoes because if you wash the potatoes, they'll last like no weeks instead of months. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. That'll be it for me for today. Finish up that field there. My name is Ian Robson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for some more Farm Sim action. I'll catch you guys later.